We welcome you to Dartmouth Memorial Stadium on this beautiful Wednesday afternoon, late September, as the Jerfy Hilltoppers have made the trip here to Dartmouth to square off against the Indians. Evan Massoud with you here on DC TV. Uh, we do apologize you missed the first 10 seconds or so. Uh, as you see, we're starting six minutes early. Um, so <laughs> we, they jumped the gun on us here today. Um, but nonetheless, we are here and bringing you live coverage of more high school sports here on DCTV. Great to be with you. Durfee in their road black uniforms. Dartmouth in their usual home whites with green shorts and a kick save attempt. Ball stays down low. The Indians on an early scoring chance able to get it back out to the top of the circle. Hilltoppers trying to clear and avoid a corner at the same time. And they do get it out of the circle once again. That's on the Far side there, Brooks Santo dumping it back in, and now it'll go out on the side. Hilltoppers uh, come into play here at 5-1-0. and oh, Their only loss to uh, probably the most polarizing team in the area, the Somerset Berkeley Raiders. And we all know why. We don't even really need to get into that. Um, on this side of things, Dartmouth at 3-1-1. and one. They picked up a loss earlier in the year to Dennis Yarmouth. And then they tied Barnstable right here on their home field. They've won their last two against Bishop Stang and BR 3-1 and 6-0. The Hilltoppers, schedule-wise, um, pulling that up here. They have, in their wins, outscored opponents 31-1. to So if I'm the Hilltoppers, hmm, score first. You know, that, that would be key to the game number one. Uh, and if you're Dartmouth on the other side of that is don't let Durfee score first because Durfee's only loss, that loss to Somerset, was a 7 nothing shutout. They were not able to get a goal in that one. Um, so ultimately, you know, it, it's, it's a simple and small sample size, but for the Hilltoppers, when they score, they're winning. Um, so if you're Dartmouth, you know, if you're able to jump out first, the Indians grab themselves an early lead here at home. That'll put some pressure on the Hilltoppers early in the game. And Dartmouth has done a good job on the offensive side of the ball here as they really got down there deep into the circle, but not able to put one through. This Indians team, um, you know, quite a bit different from last year. There were a lot of seniors that graduated, a lot of key players for head coach Beth Arguin. Um, unfortunately, under the weather, she's not here today. Uh, Kara Sedgwick, the assistant coach, leading the charge for the Indians this afternoon. If Beth is watching, we hope you feel better soon. Miss chatting with you before the game. I'll see you in Fall River for the rematch later this season. Indians put it back into play. One player that stands out, you know, to me that, you know, you know, a missing link for, for Dartmouth, one that graduated was Haskell. Man, could she fire the ball like Nobody I've seen on the South Coast in, in the time I've been covering field hockey. I mean, contact, the swing, putting the stick on the ball and driving it. It was just really remarkable. The Hilltoppers going to score first. Here just about five minutes in. So Durfee getting out to the fast start here this afternoon on the road. That goal coming at 4 minutes and 14 seconds here in the first quarter. Right. 
been a while since uh, you know we've seen this matchup here in Dartmouth in, in a game in which Durfee did score first and score this early. Uh, you know, many years Dartmouth has had Durfee's number on this turf. Last year, the Hilltoppers able to win the conference. It's cleared out, but a great stick save there from Tompkins. We're going to take a look here at the first goal. That looks like it was Alina Emery for the Hilltoppers there. Number 17, who was able to net that one. Of course, this year, um, as we mentioned in volleyball coverage Monday, these two schools no longer conference opponents. That was... Uh, Short-lived, um, just a few years that we saw the Southeast Conference. Durfee now back into uh, the traditional big three with the Whalers from New Bedford and the Boxers from Brockton. Um, and it's interesting, you know, I, I had a chance to speak to, you know, many of the Durfee coaches, as, as you viewers know, you know, my full-time gig is in Fall River with Fred TV. So I see Durfee almost on a daily basis. Um, but, you know, the, the reactions were kind of mixed, if I'm being honest. Um, and I get it. You know, I see both sides of it. Number one is this tradition with the big three, right? But there's many that could argue Durfee, New Bedford, Brockton are not quite the big three, you know, in, in the literal sense, not what they once were. Um, for me, when you're looking at a schedule and you look here on this this area of the state, there's not that many D1 opponents for these schools to play. Um, you know, much of Durfee's schedule outside of, you know, the big three, Dartmouth and BR, you know, from the old SEC, when it was the five teams, much of Durfee's schedule are South Coast Conference teams, which is Somerset, DR, ORR, um, Aponiquit, Fairhaven. These are all much lower division teams. Now, sure, there's some good there's some good individual matchups in certain sports, but you know if those are some games that Durfee's losing, as an example, it's not helping them in the long run. It's really only helping the lower division team. They're playing up and they're beating you. So, you know, in that respect, I I am one. I, I will always be a proponent for larger conferences rather than smaller conferences. I didn't like the old colony when it was Barnstable, Dartmouth, and BR. And, you know, some people may not like me for saying it. I respect the big three. I respect the tradition of it and, and what it was. But I don't like it these days, personally. You know, you're looking to fill a schedule. I think the teams in the Hockamock, really, that's, you know, one of the best conferences, in my opinion. It's a full slate of conference games. Every game matters. And, and I you know, I wish there was a situation where there were more more teams. In fact, I would love to see, you know, for a while, the Mayflower, you know, it, I shouldn't say for a while, it still is. You know, it was kind of partitioned. There, there's a Mayflower small, there's a Mayflower large. Um, and sure, there were some of the teams that crossed over, but then you, you had at least five teams in the conference that you considered your actual standings. That one gets by. Tompkins will come out with the save. You know, the Hawk is so big, and there are plenty of opponents that Durfee would see in the regular season, it would be great to split that because there's already like nine or ten teams. Split split that up and make it, you know, Hawk 1 and Hawk 2 and absorb New Bedford, Brockton, and Durfee. And now you'd have a situation where you have two big, basically D1 conferences in the South Coast area. Um, I think that would be honestly beneficial for for all the schools. That's just this one broadcaster's opinion. Um, but nonetheless, uh, Durfee back in the big three situation. So today, just really a rivalry team between two uh, close-by communities that you know, know each other well, that's for sure. A lot of these players have been playing against each other for many years and see each other twice a year, so. Big 
big swing there, gets it back to the other side of the field. Five minutes left, and uh, we got off to such a quick start. Five minutes left in this first quarter. Kind of spaced out running down your starters. So let's do that now. For the 5-1-0 Lady Hilltoppers, uh, Durfee Hilltoppers team led by head coach Nicole Henrique. It's number three, Talia Oliver. Number five, Peyton Botello. Number 10, Casey Curran, a captain. Uh, Botello is also a captain. Number 13, Avery Mata. Number 14, Elia Delisle, the third and final captain. Number 16, Avery Lane. Number 17, Alina Emery. Number 19, Anthony Sweat. And number 25, Lily Cook. In goal, number one, George Tompkins. As the Indians are going to get a corner here. We'll take a pause. and We'll get to their starters in just a moment as they reset. Swung on there by Kalen Zuber, and it goes toward the boundary and out of play. That was Sedgwick giving chase. Okay, starters for your Indians. Number one, Sydney Almeida. Number three, a captain, Kalen Zuber. We just saw her there. Number four, Captain Avery Smith. Number five, Emma Silva. Number six, Madeline Sedgwick. Number seven, Ariana Tew. Number nine, Abigail Lancaster. Number 10, Rhea Mendez. Number 12, Brooke Santo. Number 23, Reese Alves Ford. And in goal, uh, I believe she's wearing number 98. Today is Abigail Zareev, the senior, back there protecting the net. And as I mentioned today, uh, head coach for Dartmouth is Beth Arguin, but today Kara Sedgwick in charge of the team. Lane gets through, uh, Smith rather, gets through. That's taken away. Coach Sedgwick was telling me that uh, this Indians team trying a new formation. This is going to be their second game in this new formation. They liked what they saw in their, their last game, which was a win against BR. And... Um, you know, I asked her, I said, okay, I said, well, you're basically now a quarter of the way through the season. Why the change? What are you seeing? What are you hoping to accomplish? And she said, really, it's just about working the field differently and mainly trying to spread out the field so that not all bunched up in certain areas. Um, it actually creates more defense um, rather than offense. So kind of more relying on I, what I take from that is that the defenders – that the midfielders are going to be a little more on defense as well, um, trying to set up the forwards, the specific goal scorers. Um, but a young team for Dartmouth again, um, and coaching staff very pleased with the three one and one start because, you know, with all the seniors that graduated, honestly, weren't too sure what to expect. But the team, varsity, has stepped up and uh, has gotten themselves off to a very respectable start through five games. Shot taken, it is just wide of the goal. As we come up on the final minute of quarter number one. Off of Zuber and Cook will restart for Durfee again. Oh, 
Nice move around by Casey Curran. Ball down low. Whistle will halt play. There'll be a corner, but not going to have time to do it. They'll get one play here. Time running out, but they're going to get a shot to restart it. And make one attempt here. So clock at zero, and they'll get one shot. And that's it. Quarter number one in the books, but the Hilltoppers out to the quick start, leading one nothing after a goal that came at four minutes and 14 seconds, netted by Alina Emery for Durfee. Quick break here at the stadium in between quarters as the teams huddle up and go into the timeout. And we'll take that timeout as well as we get ready for quarter number two. Lot from Dartmouth High. Indians still in the huddle. And break it up now. Durfee back on the field. Dartmouth back on the field and here we go. For quarter number two, Evan Massoud with you on DCTV for field hockey. Game uh, two of four on DCTV this week, a busy sporting week for our team. Friday, a double header. We'll have soccer and football. Well, Dartmouth had a couple good scoring chances in that first quarter. Uh, one of them actually coming before Durfee scored, but were unable to get one to go. And Durfee ultimately scoring first. We'll see if the Indians have themselves an answer here in quarter number two. Dartmouth ball. Have to back up a little bit. Getting it there to Sedgwick. And now she'll give way to Santo. Cook gets through, going to fire on net, and that one goes wide to the right, gets by quickly, right through everyone. Lancaster, good pass up ahead to Smith. And it is broken up. Crowd wanted an obstruction call there. Good crowd this afternoon. Both sides pretty well represented. As you would expect, Durfee travels well up here to Dartmouth. It's not obviously a long trip at all. It's a quick 15-minute drive. That one kicked by Santo, and Durfee will reset. Delisle will drop it and fire away. Poked away there by DeSoto.
Smith sending it to the right side. Sedgwick passing up to Almeida as the Indians try to get down the field here. That one gets through, looking for a save, and they get one from Zareev. Yeah, she kicks it out. Check out that save again from Zareev here as we have a, a minute. That ball came in pretty hot. None of the forwards for the Hilltoppers could get there fast enough. Zareev still having to come out, though, to kick it as we're back live. She couldn't wait on it, but didn't get too much pressure, able to make it look routine. Out of bounds. Santo will get us restarted. Quickly loses it, and Durfee will have it. A chance for the Indians. Nobody there, the crossing pass. And Durfee clearing it out. Well, in this uh, last week, we've seen these two schools square off in pretty much every sport. And uh, Dartmouth was victorious in girls soccer, in football, and in Girls volleyball, soccer was a tie. And now here we are seeing field hockey for the first time with the Hilltoppers leading. So right now Dartmouth has the edge head to head in the first round of games against the Hilltoppers. And Durfee could basically even the records here. Or I, I should say grab their one and only win. They would try to avoid a winless situation. So Dartmouth 3-0-1, head-to-head -head against Durfee across the sports, coming into today. Halfway through quarter number two. Big swing there, Durfee getting it down the field quickly and through. Towards the goal, cleared away for the moment, out of the circle.
Durfee going to earn the corner here. Big swing, a lot of spin on it. Durfee keeps it up there. Hot shot, and it will not go. It's going to be waved off. Infraction coming. We'll take a look. The goal waved off by the officials. Not the first time this has happened to Durfee this season. So it'll stay one nothing. The Indians catch a major break there. Oh, rather rough collision as Zuber even lost the stick. That'll go out as Tompkins watches it roll out of play. Good battle there, and winning it is Curran. And now it's taken away by Silva. Hops right in front. And she'll reset. I'm going to send it back, in fact, to Silva. Hilltoppers with a scoring opportunity, and it is going to be off to the right, to the side of the net, and no good. Another chance for Durfee through the defense. Shot taken. Great save. Back up. Coming for the Hilltoppers as well as Emery was looking for her second. She got the rebound. But Zareev with a great save. Durfee with two chances right there. And Zareev taking care of it. Twice. That's great. Hilltoppers with the corner. Big swing. Jarred the stick loose. Now in front, trying to keep it in. And a diving effort for Durfee, but it goes out of play. Two minutes to go in this first half, second quarter. Winding down. That one gets by and will roll. Good speed. As Almeida gave chase, could not get there in time. Durfee will bring it back to midfield.
Shot taken, and Durfee will score their second. This one coming inside 60 seconds of this, inside the final minute of this second quarter. I believe that was Curran. So two nothing Hilltoppers. With a goal late here in the half. Ball goes out, 10 seconds. And the first half comes to a close with the visitors. Up to nothing here, Dartmouth with some work to do. When we return to action for the third quarter, down two zip, certainly uh, not an insurmountable deficit, but definitely some work to do. We'll take the halftime break and see you back here in about seven minutes. I'm Magnolia McComish, the town's communications coordinator and the host of What's Cooking. Ever wondered what town employees cook up when they're off the clock? Or you could add linguisa or chadis, anything really that you have on hand. Join us for What's Cooking in Town. Each episode features town employees whipping up delicious dishes while we dive into exciting town projects and initiatives. One of the next things that we're looking to, to get online and, and try to give people an option to not have to go out of their way so much is uh, dump stickers with a DPW. We will stir up conversations on how these developments benefit our town. Tune in, cook along, and discover how we are building a better community one meal at a time. You can also add it right before you're ready to serve it. It's gonna be a little while before we can eat this. It's really hot. Sundays at 10 a.m. or on Dartmouth Community Media's YouTube channel. Indians taking to the field as we get ready for the third quarter. Dartmouth 
And Durfee squaring off in field hockey today. Evan Massoud with you. Durfee with the 2-0 advantage as we uh, switch sides here to begin the second half. Both teams with just one loss on the year. Dartmouth also has a tie at 3-1-1. One, one. Durfee at 5-1-0. Oh. And if you're the Indians, I would say you got to get out to a quick start here in the second half. Durfee, you know, has scored twice. One goal was wiped off the board. Rem remember that. So it could be 3 nothing right now. But in addition to that, the Hilltoppers have, you know, really created some good chances for themselves. And here they are down the field quickly again, but that'll go out of bounds. So if I'm Dartmouth, you need to start creating, you know, some offensive chances for yourself and uh, try to figure out a way to, to beat Durfee's defense. It's been challenging, that's for sure, because of stops like that. This is what we've been seeing through 30 minutes of gameplay. And a whistle will halt everybody. Dartmouth had a couple goal scoring opportunities. So Tompkins make a couple saves. But um, definitely a bit skewed in terms of you know chances. Durfee has the advantage in that department. Infraction against Sweat, who was trying to send it back down. He'll have to retreat as he gets back to the defensive line. Cook with a big send down the field. Couple hops. Durfee trying to keep it down that way. And it is Curran trying to weave her way and lost control of the ball. Sent down the field, kind of eats up Durfee's defense a bit. Oh, I think uh, the Hilltoppers were expecting a whistle. And you saw uh, Botello kind of just give up on that there because it, it came up and hit her high around the hands. And I think she was expecting the play to be whistled dead. And uh, in fact, play continued. Now Sedgwick will set it up there right from the edge of the box in terms of the soccer boundaries. The field hockey uh, lines here are the black lines on this field, for those of you who may be tuning in to, for the first time. Uh, not that easy to see, <laughs> if I'm being honest, although the lacrosse lines are not much better. Um, the lacrosse are like a navy blue and almost blending in at this point. But I will say this though, you know, walking out on the field, um, I park on the other side, so I actually step foot on the turf whenever I'm here. This field has been, you know, maintained well. It looks like it's in good good shape. It feels good as you're walking on it. it doesn't feel like there's flat spots and stuff. I don't know how the athletes feel. I mean, I'm speaking just as a broadcaster, but um, another good chance for the Indians. Kick save from Tompkins. Second chance, that's gonna go. And that looks like it was Zuber. 
And that cuts the lead in half at four minutes and 24 seconds. Gonna kick save here and comes back out. And indeed, Zuber with the goal. Uh, but yeah, you know, getting back to the field, honestly, this, this field is in really good condition. It seems, at least from here, that they've, you know, Dartmouth has certainly kept up with it and still a good surface to play on. I remember what a big deal it was when they finally got this and the new lights, um, just for the fact that, you know, it, it was more to regulation size. Uh, we all recall that. The grass field, uh, particularly for the soccer side of things, was not, you know, not like the normal width that you would see. And um, so it made things a little challenging for the visiting players. It definitely would be, I would consider a home field advantage, you know, to have something quirky like that. The Indians forging ahead and the Hilltoppers able to clear it. Down the field, Almeida weaving through Hilltoppers traffic. Gonna set one up here on the other side. It's broken up by DeSoto. Indians keeping it up this way. Zuber going to take another shot. Oh, it misdirects, and it is sent out of play. It'll be a corner for the Indians, but the defense backing up Tompkins big time right there. Take a look at it again. Zuber took that shot, and it was deflected. Actually went off of one of the Hilltoppers. I think that was Mata. It looked like number 13 as we're waiting on Smith to get over to the goal line to set this one in play. So that one hit Mata, and then a quick reaction to, to get over to the goal line and send it out of play because Tompkins wasn't there. Couldn't get there in time. Sending it out. and But there is an infraction, so it's going to be another corner despite it being hit out by Dartmouth. Durfee getting it down the field here after the couple of corners and some good scoring chances for the Indians.
Shot taken, it's good. Durfee with their third. And you know, for Dartmouth, that's a real killer because they just had some great chances to score. You know, they scored early in this third quarter just about five minutes ago. And then, is that Curran again, number 10? I think it was. Let's see, she gets it out of the... Hard to tell. The, the road uniforms for the Hilltoppers are a little more difficult to read the numbers. The numbers are kind of small compared to the home ones, but nonetheless, Durfee back out with a little extra cushion, a two goal advantage here. But I, as I was saying, kind of a real killer for Dartmouth because they did get the goal to make it two to one and then they kept the pressure on and you know, nearly tied it. I do like what I've seen though from Dartmouth here in this third quarter, you know, starting the second half. Clearly some adjustments were made at halftime. Um, Dartmouth taking more shots, a little more aggressive getting up the field, which is which is good. It's kind of what you need to do now when you're playing from behind. One of the few times are the clock will stop here. I have to say, you know, it was I get spoiled doing uh, field hockey because in the fall, the sports lineup, the games are so long. You know, in soccer, 40-minute halves feel very long. Um, you could do 20-minute quarters and it would feel so much quicker just because of that little break in between. I kind of enjoy it when uh, the coaches take a timeout halfway through the half. Um, almost like a routine, like just to take a break and to talk, get some water and, you know, talk about what's working and what's not. I, I've always thought that's a good time for that. Um, so, but still, soccer can be long. Um, football can be, we know, very long. Um, even when there's a running clock situation, it can be long. Um, and volleyball, you just never know. I mean, there are some volleyball matches that'll go two hours. If it goes five and all five games are, you know, all five sets are really close. So field hockey with the running clock thing is just, it's a real sleeper. It's a quick game. And I think that's, you know, going in, when we go into winter sports after the fall, man, doing basketball and hockey feels like nothing because <laughs> they're so quick. You know, time flies this this. A lot of goal scoring, you know, ice hockey, of course, on, on the ice, it's a small playing surface compared to this, the size of this field. You know, so there's usually tons of scoring chances, so constant action. Basketball, it's constant baskets and scoring. So winter sports really um, very quick and exciting games as well. But the, from a time standpoint, they feel super fast just because of how long some of the fall sports are. And then there's baseball, America's pastime, right, in the spring. <laughs> I do enjoy softball. I enjoy baseball, too, but again, you know, the games can, sometimes they drag on, and then you do softball games. I remember doing a softball game here at high school that literally took like an hour and 15 minutes. It was insane how fast the game went. I think it was like a one nothing or a a two to one, something, you know, low scoring. The innings were just like, you know, four batters an inning, some one, two, three innings. It was quick. Um, you'll never see that in a baseball game, though, that's for sure. Under two minutes here in the third. Indians get the favorable whistle, and Smith will take it. Cook trying to get around. Smith kind of whiffs a little bit at that one. And uh, they're going to pull gonna pull Smith back. They wanted to restart from a dead stop back where the infraction happened. So 
Can't progress forward. Shot taken, and it'll roll all the way out of play. One minute to go, and if the Indians can get it down the field here, they have some time to try to make something happen. Unfortunately, that whistle going against them, and so the Hilltoppers will be able to take the free ball here. Corner coming for Durfee, 30 seconds. Got to line up quickly. Out to Delisle. Hooking swing, and it is good! The Hilltoppers score with 10 seconds left in the third. Delisle went back to Curran, and it was tipped in. And that was Emery jumping around. I think she's the one who tapped it in on the side there, and that's a real crushing goal for the Indians to give one up that late in the quarter. So the Hilltoppers have widened their advantage after giving up their first goal. They score two in the final five minutes or so of the third and have opened it up to a three goal advantage. Four to one the score. Fourth quarter coming up. Dartmouth on your screen as we get ready for the fourth quarter here. And uh, Kaylin Zuber, one of the captains, number three, right at the top there in the middle. Um, really giving some pointers and some words of encouragement to her team. Very smart player, one who knows the game well and has been a major contributor in her time here as an Indian. She's a junior this year. Um, and... Maybe even a little frustrated at that last goal, and it's okay to be because uh, you, know, you never want to give one up so late in the quarter. Um, and like I said, you know, when especially when you battle back and score first in that third quarter to make it a two to one game, now you're down by three. Makes it a little more challenging here with just 15 minutes to go, but nonetheless, the clock is rolling. Evan Massoud with you here for game two of four on our high school sports coverage this week here on DCTV. This is my last one for a couple weeks, um, but it's been great to be back with you here in Dartmouth this week. We had girls volleyball Monday and now field hockey today. Friday, a double header with soccer at um, 345 and then football at seven o'clock, of course. Jim, Paul, and Andy will have the call for you for football week four. Hard to believe September is uh, nearly done. October 1st is Tuesday. Durfee has scored number five. This one coming 
63 seconds. And is that Car I think that's Curran coming out with the with the ball. It is. So by my count, that's Curran's third. That would be a hat trick for her. And Durfee with a five to one lead here at Dartmouth High School Memorial Field. So Durfee, if you uh, wrap it around, end of the third, start of the fourth, that's two goals in less than 90 seconds for the Hilltoppers. Closing in here on uh, win number six. Four goals, going to be hard to come back from. Anything possible, but... Durfee has had some offensive success here. Late in the third and now here to start the fourth. Make it number six. A hot shot from Delisle from the top of the circle. Actually, you know what? Emery came out with it. And it looks like she deflected it in. It changed direction. So that would be her third. And the assist would go to Delisle. So big games here for Casey Curran, number 10. And Alina Emery, one of uh, quite a few sophomore starters for Coach Henrik. Good push here from the Indians. Corinne hops. Had to go out of bounds, get that one. She'll get it back into play. Emery. Down the field there with Curran now taking a swing. Good battle for the ball, and Dartmouth winning that battle. Durfee's next game will be Saturday, 3 o'clock at Seekonk. Before returning home for three straight games, they'll have Notre Dame Academy from Hingham. Coming in on Monday, Attleboro Thursday, and then the following Monday against Brockton. That's Monday the 7th. Looking ahead for Dartmouth. They're kind of back and forth, home and away, home and away, home and away. On Friday, they have a road game against Aponiquit, 4 o'clock. Then next week, three games, home against Bridgewater Raynham away at New Bedford High, and then home again on Friday the 4th against North Attleboro. Five minutes gone here, under 10 minutes now in the game.
Almeida earns the whistle on the foul there against Patello. And she's got some help down the field. Crossing pass, Tompkins. It will go, Dartmouth with their second. And Smith coming out with it. But it was Almeida who really got it started. Crossed it over to Smith. And Smith able to get it. Tompkins couldn't kick it away. Kind of got between his feet. This one at 6.04 here in the fourth. Second goal for Dartmouth. Their first one coming courtesy of Kalen Zuber. This one, Avery Smith. Zuber weaving through. Delisle getting time there as uh, she was inadvertently poked in the eye. All smiles there, not upset in any way, but just needed a minute, and the officials called a timeout. That one out of play. Oh, a little extra there. And it'll be a card. Peyton Botello not happy with that call. Almeida, though, getting Bit of a shove there from her. And a timeout called. As we're in the timeout here, let's take a look at that. A little extra here after the play. Yeah, I mean, I didn't see anything before that, and all I saw was, you know, Botello kind of a little, you know, elbow check, little shoulder check there, but and she's not happy she got the yellow, but nonetheless, call stands, and the timeout coming here at seven twenty nine, just one second past the halfway mark of the fourth. That one out of play. It was Durfee with the uh, card. Only nine players on the field plus the goalie, not the usual 11 on 11. As Botello waits in the foreground off camera to re-enter the game. Current moving down the field. It'll go out on the goal line.
Delisle down the line. It's blocked and taken back by Hops. Now Curran. Curran beats Zuber, earns the foul, takes a big swing, and that goes quickly out of play. We, every time the ball going that way and out of bounds kind of wastes a little more time. Almeida, double teamed, it's broken up, but the foul against Durfee, and a free ball for Dartmouth. Hops in traffic, a swing and a miss here from Smith. Keeps with it though. And Sweat able to clear it as it leaves the circle. Still up that end of the field, but. And Durfee will have it. Under five minutes to go. Yeah, see Hilltoppers closing in on win number six, up six to two. Big shot right there. It gets by Alves Ford. Sends it back. Curran got there and collided with Chu, who went down. So now Curran goes down, doesn't get the call. Almost the same thing that she just got called the foul on it. Knocking down to you. Sent back in by Tiu. Almeida misses it. Now hops. That gets through. Tompkins kicks it. And Durfee gets it out of the circle. That was a late reaction there from Tompkins. Lucky for him that it went out of play as Patello will re-enter now with two and a half to go. But uh, I'm not so sure that Tompkins actually saw that one until the last minute. That ball came in pretty hot. And again, fortunately for him, not that, I mean, at this point in the game, a third goal would only, only make it a it would make it a three-goal game. Not going to necessarily hurt the Hilltoppers, one wouldn't think. But still uh, a little dangerous when you can't see it coming at you. Almeida forging ahead. Close to the goal line. Dartmouth will get the reset. 90 seconds to play here at Memorial Stadium.
Curran sends it down, out of bounds on the sidelines. Good stick work right there from Mata. Durfee will have the reset here, the free ball. Delisle. A corner coming, which should pretty much wrap up the game as we're now under 30 seconds. Whistle means to restart. Uh, Cook gets it back. We'll take the shot and a kick save from Zareev, and that will do it. The Hilltoppers with a solid victory here on the road at Dartmouth, a field in which has not been too kind to them in recent years, but Durfee victorious today in varsity play against their rivals from Dartmouth. Uh, you know, minus their victory against Aponiquit, which was a three to one victory. Their other now five victories, Durfee has scored at least five goals. Uh, they've been putting up a lot of crooked numbers and uh, this adds to it. It's five straight for the Hilltoppers. They are six, one and oh for Dartmouth. It breaks a mini two game winning streak. They drop to three, two, and one. Well, great to be with you this afternoon for more high school sports. Again, a doubleheader Friday. Soccer at 345 and then week four football at seven. So be sure to tune in to DCTV for more Indians coverage. I'll be back with you folks here on local channel two weeks from today. Uh, for boys soccer as the Indians host the Lakers from Aponiquet. Till then, for our great crew behind the scenes, wish you a great rest of the work week. I'm Evan Massoud. Final score, 6-2. to two, Durfee wins it.